we do exam preparation. If you have any question before we start with today's session, feel free to ask. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'm going to post the, the register in the chat. Um, please complete the, the attendance register. Uh, in the previous session, they were asked if they can put also their student number in the chat. I'm not sure how possible that is, but <clears throat> you can also share your student numbers in the chat, but there is a, I've posted the register on the chat as well. So you should be able to complete that. <clears throat> this week's session, we're going to deal with data handling which is part of the statistics, how to um, how to summarize the data uh, into statistics uh, calculations or into charts and all that. That's what we're going to be doing today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask before we start. Last time, I think we shared the three documents. I'm not sure if I did. I was able to share them on the chat or, or where were they? Uh, we have, oh, I was not able to share them and I don't think I'm able to share uh, any attachment from I don't know. I can share an attachment on the <clears throat> on the chat. Let me see if I can try. So upload one of the question papers. The last time I I couldn't. Yeah, I still can't. There is no place for me to attach any <clears throat> any document. Um, Otherwise, we can try the other way around, which is where are we at. Let's see. There is no place. Share that. Um, see if um, I can find an, an alternative to I'm not sure if you are able to see the the file section of our our meeting. I've shared two documents there but it might be that you are not able to access it. Just let me know if you are able to see them. Hi, Elizabeth. I can see uh, the two files there on the chat, yes. Thank you very much. Sure, they are there. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let me... Add touch the last one so that then you have all of them. Actually, I'll put four. There are two more. I'll just put two more so then you will have four. Now let me also open the last one as well. And then I will start sharing my screen. Just give me a second to share. Okay, so yeah, like I said, welcome to today's session where we're going to discuss um, data handling. So in terms of your module, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not quite sure, but in terms of your module, you do 
um, a little bit of data handling where you need to calculate the mean, the median, the mode, uh, the co uh, coefficient of um, uh, the, uh, the quartiles and the quartile deviations. And sometimes they do ask you to <coughs> um, to describe what a, a frequency distribution is like, right? So that those are the type of questions that we're going to be looking at when we look at data handling. Um, I just need to get there <coughs> to those questions. So these are some of those questions, right? Okay, so in terms of data handling, so we do have a measures of <clears throat> locality, which are the measures that describe where your data is at. And those measures, we've got three of them. We have the mean, which is just the sum of all the values divided by how many there are. It gives you the average of the values. So you add all the values together and you divide by how many they are. <clears throat> and then you have what we call the mode, <laughs> which is the most frequent. Most frequent value, which means is the value that appears more than the other values, like multiple times than the other values, not the highest value, but the one that repeats itself more than the rest of the other values. <clears throat> then you have the median. With the median, before you can find the median, which the median is your middle value, your middle value, before you can find your middle value, it's always advisable to find the position first. And by using n plus one divided by two, so it means you take the total number of values that you have, you add the one to that and you divide by two. And once you have the position, then you can count towards <coughs> where that position is. And then um, that is your middle value. But before you also can do all this, you need to order your data. So your, your data needs to be sorted from uh, smallest to highest. So it must be odd. It must be ordered in ascending order, meaning from the lowest number to the highest number <coughs> before you can find the position. And also the other thing to take note of, if the position value that you get is a whole number, then the number that you find in that location it will be your median, right? If it's a fractional or which is 0.5, if your answer is 0.5, therefore it means it is located between two values. <clears throat> it will be between two values. And when it's between two values, then you're going to take the average of the two values that they the median position falls in. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, <clears throat> six, and if the middle value sits between three and four, you're just going to say three plus four, and you divide that by two, and your middle value will be 3.5. That's how you will find the medians and the mode and the mid and and the mean. Okay, so you need to remember all that. Okay, so let's answer the questions relating to that. Let's do more exercises. So I'm just refreshing your memory because you would have gone through these things on your own before. So <clears throat> questions like this. Suppose, uh, so with this statement, we're going to answer six, seven, eight, and nine. The first one says, or the statement says, suppose a company has 10 employees. So therefore it means there are 10 of them. Our N is 10 when I was always referring to N, N is 10, 10 employees, one earning 160,000, the other one earning 120,000, two of them earning 60,000, and one of them earning 40,000, and five of them earning 32,000. 
what is the mean of the company? So before you can also even calculate the mean, because remember the mean is the sum of all of them, right? So you need to know um, that you have 532,000. So I'm just going to write there 32, 32, 32, 32. Those are 32,000. I'm just keeping the thousands um, away because I'm going to run out of space. So 32,000, five of them. And it says the next one is 40,000. There's only one 40,000 and there is two 60,000. So you need to also make sure that you have all two of them, the 60,000. And it says 120, 120, and one and 160, 160. So if I count all of them, they should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I've got 10. In order for us to calculate the mean, we know that the mean is calculated by the sum of all the values divided by how many they are. Therefore, you need to say 32 plus 32 plus 32 plus 32. <clears throat> how many 32s? Four. Plus 32 plus 40 plus 60 plus 60 plus 120 plus 160. Let's see if I have all of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Divide by 10. And that should give you that. So the answer that we will get there, we'll have to multiply it by 1,000 because we removed the 1,000, right? Don't forget to do that. So let's all calculate so that we can find out which one is our mean of these salaries. So it's 32 plus 32 plus 32 plus 32 plus 32. Plus 40. Plus 60. Plus 60. Plus 120, plus 160, divide by 10, multiply that by 1,000. <coughs> And the answer is, what do you get? So I get 60 multiplied by 1,000. Give me 60,000. Do you also get 60,000? Yes. Yes. You? And that is? Yes. Yeah, that, that will be the, the mean. So to calculate the median, we already have ordered our data from uh, lowest value to highest value, which is easy. So now let's calculate the position. So n plus 1 divided by 2. n is 10 plus 1 divided by 2. <coughs> what is n? It's 10 plus 1 divided by 2, which gives us 5.5. So already I can see that it will fall between two values. Then you go and calculate uh, or count till you get to five. One, two, three, four, five point five will be between 32 and 40. So our median will be 32 plus 40 divided by two. That will be our median. <clears throat> salary. Remember, it will be multiplied by a thousand at the end, right? Because I've taken away the thousand. Thirty-two plus forty equals seventy-two divided by two. It's thirty-six multiplied by a thousand is thirty-two plus forty equals divided by two equals thirty-six. 
multiply by a thousand equals to 36,000. So it's 36 multiplied by a thousand will be 36,000. Happy? Yeah. Are we good? Okay. And the next question they are asking, what is the mode? Remember, the mode is the number that appears more than the other numbers. So let's go see which number appears more than the rest of the other numbers. <coughs> the number that appears more than the other numbers is 32,000 because it appears five times, right? <coughs> so the answer is 32,000. And that is your mode. That's one, <clears throat> one thing. The next one <laughs> that I didn't explain is measures of dispersion or measures of variation. Those are the measures that tells you how far apart your data points are from the mean. So let's go back to our data. This is our mean. We found that our mean is 60. So in order to know how far apart the data is from this 60, we calculate what we call a standard deviation, which tells us how dispersed the data is. It will tell us whether it's one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviation, and so on. So how do we calculate the standard deviation? We use the formula, the square root of your variance, which is the sum of your x observation minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1. <clears throat> so what does that mean? It means we need to go back to each and every individual that, uh, value that we have, <coughs> multiply that, uh, the answer to that multiplied by uh, by itself or squared. So we take every individual minus the mean squared divide by how many they are. So let's go and do it on this space here. Uh, 32, 40, 60, 120. I'm going to write them here. 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 40, 60, 60, 120, and 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we know that our standard deviation is the square root of the sum of your x observation minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1. So do it this way. Remember, in this instance, we need to also find what the mean was. So the mean was 60. I'm going to use 60 instead of, instead of 60,000 so that then the numbers can fit on here. So we need to say 32 minus 60 squared plus 32 minus 60 squared plus 32 minus 60 squared plus <clears throat> 32 minus 60 squared plus 32 minus 1, 2, 3, 4. 32 minus 60 squared plus 40 minus 60 squared plus 60 minus 60 squared plus 60 minus 60 squared plus 120 minus 1, oh, 60 squared, plus 160 minus 60 squared, everything divided by 10 minus 1. <clears throat> so we need to go and solve the equation. So <clears throat> let's do that. Oh, my thing in my book now. My calculator just did itself.
Tak. Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> 32, 32 minus 60 equals minus 28 squared. It is 784. I'm just going to write it five times. 784 plus 784 plus 784 plus 784. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 40 minus 60. 40 minus 60 equals minus 20 squared is 400 plus 400 plus. 60 minus 60 is 0, squared is 0, plus 120 minus 60 equals 60 squared is 3,600, 3,600, plus 160 minus 60 squared is 10,000. 10,000. Divide everything by 9. So now we need to go and add all of them. 784 plus 784 plus 784 plus until all of them, all five of them, it's equal to 3920 plus hmm, 400 plus 3,600 plus 10,000 equals uh, 1,000 or oh, 17,920 over 9. Maybe I should go down. Over 9. I'm just I'm also going to show you shortcuts that you don't have to unless those who don't know how to use your calculator, you can do it manually like I'm doing it and you can see how time consuming this is. So we need to take this divide by nine. And <clears throat> get the square root of one nine nine one. Point one 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 one. There are very lot of numbers of one, <laughs> repeated numbers of one, and we need to take the square root of that answer. And the square root is equals to forty four point six two. So let's go see if we get the same answer. Ah, sorry, my bad. Remember also forty six. We need to multiply this by a thousand. So the answer is 44.6218 and multiply that by a thousand. Always remember that, right? Multiply that. Multiply the answer with a thousand, and the answer is equals to forty four thousand six hundred and twenty one point eight seven. So let's see four four six two one. The answer is option number two. <coughs> And that's how you will answer the question, right? Okay, so let's now, uh, actually, let me stop sharing and go share my entire screen. So that I can demo on the calculator as well the things that we just did. I've got two types of calculators. Um, let me know if you are able to see my screen. 
I'm going to demo once and then I'm going to go out of my sharing the entire screen. Uh, just give me a second because my laptop is dying. Uh, I must go get the laptop charger. But if you didn't have any calculator next to you, um, especially a Casio calculator or a sharp calculator, whether it's a scientific, um, a financial math um, calculator, it's still going to work. Uh, not panic. That I don't have the same calculator as yours. <clears throat> So we should be we are all connected. So I'll start first with the uh with a Casio calculator. I don't know how many of you are using a Casio. <clears throat> so we'll use the same information. Whether you're using a Casio or a sharp calculator, the basic thing that Excuse you always me, need to second. remember. Yes. Are you, are you sharing your calculator? Uh, is it on the screen? Because I can't see anything. Are you not seeing my screen right now? I only see the people that are joining the um, the class. So, and now, um, now I can see it. Yes, just the. Um, are you seeing my screen? What's most yes, important I, is, are you seeing yes, my screen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yes. And um, now, now I can see. Yeah. Uh, you see my calculator, right? Yes. Yes, I can. Yeah. So. <clears throat> So the most important thing is always to read your question, decipher your question, make sure you understand what you are given, write it out, the things that are given to you so that you are able to highlight um, the facts within the question, right? So before you start using your calculator, like we did here, by expanding the statement into the actual values, even though I didn't write them in thousands, but at least I've got all of them here and I remember and I know that they are in thousand. <clears throat> that the answer every time I must always refer to them in thousands. <clears throat> so now let us answer the same question. The only the only things that we are able to answer using our calculator is the mean. And the standard deviation. The mode and the median, you still have to go and find them manually or whatever, whichever way you find them, we find them, like finding the position and then calculating or counting where it is and then allocating it and then calculating the average if it falls within the two values. The mode, looking at the values and identifying the one that appears the most. <clears throat> the only thing that we're going to use for the calculation, the mean on your Casio or your sharp, uh, whichever one. So if you are, if you have your sharp financial calculator in front of you, <coughs> there are values written in green. <coughs> you should be able to identify those values. On button number four, there is your X bar, which is the mean. On button number five, there is the SX which will be your standard deviation that you are calculating. <clears throat> and in order for us to reach those green button, we're going to use the alpha button. But that is that. So <coughs> those who are having a scientific sharp calculator or those who are having a financial maths calculator, don't panic, don't worry. 
they will use the same method. We will go follow the same process with the same calculator that I will show you. <clears throat> Those who are using a Casio um, that has the fraction button, it's going to be easy as well. Some of the Casio, they've got um, two buttons separated. They've got the S, S dash sum and the S dash var on button number one and button number two. If you have that calculator, the method also is always almost the same, exactly the same. It's just <clears throat> that you are going to press different functions. So, but if you have a calculator that looks like this, that has a fraction button, and you have on button number one, the stat button, or the stat written in orange, <coughs> we're going to reach that by using the shift button. But before you start with any of the calculator, you need to put it on stat mode. So you're going to press mode, and you're going to press the number that corresponds with ST80, which, which is stat, which is button number two, and you will get this menu. We're only going to be looking at number one, which is one minus var. You press button number one, <clears throat> and you will get a table. Don't panic if your table, when you press it, it has X and it has a frequency on next to it. Do not worry about that. We're only going to look at the X value. In order for us to capture these values, here on your calculator, you can capture them the way you see them, like 32,000, 30, uh, 40,000, and so on. You can use that, or you can still continue and use the same method that I did, keeping them short. But always remember, once you get to the answer, to multiply it by 1,000. So let's keep the whole numbers. It might take us forever because there are so many. So you press the number and you press equal. <clears throat> and you go on and capture the rest of the, the values. Equal, 32,000, equal, 32,000, equal, 32,000, equal. <laughs> if you check your numbers and you see that you've captured something wrong, there is no problem. You can just go and say 32,000, Equal, it will replace that number that you've captured wrong, and then you just continue. <clears throat> and then we go to 40,000 equals and 60,000. 60,000 equals 60,000 equal and 120,000 equal and 160,000 equal. And we have all 10 values captured. That is the most important thing. You need to make sure that you have 10 of them. If you have 11, where you see on row 11, it's, it's black. It means there is nothing for that. It means if you have a value there, it means you've done something wrong. You just need to go ahead and, and check your values. Once you have captured your values, then you can go <clears throat> press and go ahead and press the AC button. Your data is stored in the memory of your calculator. So you haven't lost anything. And on your calculator, it will show that you are in a state mode. And now we are ready to do state calculations. In order for us to do state calculation, we need to reach out to this function state by first pressing the shift button and then pressing button number one to call up the menu for the state function. You will see that you have so many other values or, or labels on here. If you press two, it will take you back to the data that we have stored. And you can go out again and press shift. You will always have to press shift and start to go back to the menu. <laughs> when you look at number three, it says sum. The sum are these values here. The summations is this. So if I press three, you will see that it will give me sum of x squared. It means if I'm taking this value and squaring them <clears throat> and adding them all up, it will give me sum of x squared. If I'm looking for the sum on the mean function, the sum, which means adding all these values at the top, I can just press button number two 
n press equal and it will give me 600,000. And if I divide that by 10, because there were 10 of them, and I will get an answer of 60,000, which is what we got, right? That was the answer that we got. But that is not what I want to show you. <clears throat> so you can still find the summation, which is the sum via this method. What I want to show you is how we calculate the mean X bar. To calculate the mean, you need to go to this button called VAR. <clears throat> so if I press, or before I go to the VAR, you can also get the minimum and the maximum value by pressing button number five. If I press five, then they tell me what is the minimum value of this data set and what is the maximum value of this data set. That is if you don't know the minimum value and the maximum value. <coughs> it can give you that. We're not looking for that. We're looking for <coughs> the VAR. So we're going to press button number four. And on button number four, we know N because we know that it's 10. If you want, if you're not sure you want to validate, you can press one and it will give you n is equals to 10. Um, number two, it will calculate the mean. We know that the mean is 60,000, so let's go and validate that. So we press two, and you press equal, and that is your mean, so there. <clears throat> in the exam, it will be a three-step process because you in the exam, you are not going to be taking time explaining things to anybody. You are just going to just capture the data, Press shift, start, and then four, and then the value uh, of the mean, which is two, equal, and then that's what you will get as an answer. It will literally take you two minutes in the exam. So let's go and find the standard deviation. So we go press four, and the standard deviation is on uh, <laughs> button number four. This one is for the population, but we deal with this, the, the sample. So we use four for SX <coughs> for the standard deviation. So we're going to press button number four and we're going to press equal. And there is our answer. If I scroll to the standard deviation, <coughs> We did find that the standard deviation is 44,621.86. And voila, Bob so angle. So instead of calculating this whole big formula, you can just rely on using your calculator. It will give you the same answer. So let's do the same with our our financial maths calculators. So those who have a financial maths calculator or the sharp calculator, you can follow the same step. But now, because I don't have my financial maths calculator in front of me, there is um uh, there is a button here at the bottom. I think it's an ENT. That's the button that we're going to be using to capture the data. So like any other calculator, you need to first put it into mode function. So you're going to press mode. <coughs> and on your calculator, you're going to press the number that corresponds with stat, which is button number one. And you're going to use SD. It will reflect as SD on your side. And then you press zero and it will say you are instead zero. <clears throat> Your calculator is ready. And also at the top, it will have a state function. Now you are ready to, to get the data. So on your calculator, you will not get a table. <clears throat> so in order for you to keep track of what you are doing, you need to be very, very careful because Every time you enter the data, it will tell you data set one, data set two, data set three, until data set 10. If you make any mistake, you have to clear your calculator and start again. And I'm gonna show you just now. 
So you need to be very careful when you enter your data. So <clears throat> how do we enter the data here? Because our calculator is ready. We go and say 32,000. 32, you're going to press that and you're going to press the enter button on, on the Casio. It's an M plus. So I'll press M plus or you will press E and T and it will say the um, data set one. So I need to continue 32,000 and M plus. So you will always say enter 32,000. I must not forget M plus. So this is data set three, 32,000. Data set four, 32,000. Data set five. So now I know that I've captured all five of them. The next one was 40, 40 and 260. 40,000 and plus, <clears throat> and then 60,000 and plus, 60,000 and plus, and 120,000. M plus and 120, 160. <clears throat> M plus. And it says data set 10. Now I know that I've captured all of them. Once you have done, the data will be stored on your calculator and then you press the <clears throat> on and off. If you make any mistakes, you enter the wrong number, you just press second function and the mode button, it will clear your calculator and then you can start capturing the data again. <clears throat> Going back to the table, it's easy to clear your calculate the data and capture them again anyway. But I will show you also later on how to how do you clear your data because when you need to capture new information, you need to clear your calculator. Okay, so now <clears throat> with this calculator, it's easy because everything is in front of you. It's just two buttons to press. So the first one is to find the mean. We press the green button, which is the alpha button, and then you press button number four, which gives you the mean, and always press the equal sign. As you can see, the answer is right there, 60,000. Doing the standard deviation as well is button number five, alpha, but the number five equals, and there is your standard deviation. 4462, 1.87. <laughs> and that's how you will answer questions relating to the mean, the median, the moon, the standard deviation, and so on. Easy, right? <clears throat> so let's say we are done with calculating all this and we want to clear our calculator. Clearing your calculator easy. Second function, CA will clear your calculator and you will see if I apply the values, it will give me an error because there are no values stored on my calculator. <clears throat> For the case here, hmm. clearing your calculator, no easy way of clearing your calculator. You just need to go and say mode, Go back to your data. Uh, sorry, you can clear it by pressing the shift. Actually, let's go back there. You can say shift, clear your calculator, and then say clear from memory. And yes, is for cancel uh, for clearing, which is equal, <clears throat> and AC for any key button. And if I want to double check that I've cleared the calculator, let's see, because I've, I needed to clear the memory. So if I go back to data, which is number two, it should have cleared the calculator, it didn't clear. So let's see if I come here and I say clear all three, what happens? So sometimes with your case, you you just need to go back to the normal, but it will not work anymore because it went back to math. And you just need to go back to mode two, and you might find that the data is still there or it's clear. So that's all if you want to use your calculator to clear. And that's it in terms of the... <clears throat>
um, data handling. There are no more other questions on data handling on this question paper. So let's go and look at another question paper. <clears throat> Okay, there is another question. I'm going to give you time uh, because you need time because these are huge numbers. There are about 25 numbers on here. You need to order this number from lowest to highest. <clears throat> uh actually no you don't because we're dealing with no let's not let's let's deal with the media the mode the way we see it <clears throat> because they're not asking you to calculate the mean or the median and so on especially the median so look at this find out which value here is the mode of this data set therefore it means which value from here appears more than the other values i'm gonna give you two minutes or five three minutes i'll be back i need to get water <laughs> Hi, Yella. As he man van Yella, what for my can help me this sharp calculator? As a belief man, exacle now um the unworded the carry of the dung of um the store. I only have a Casio. I don't really know how to work the shop. So I can't help you, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Do we have an answer? Um, one forty. It's one forty. One forty appears more than the rest of the other numbers because one twenty appears only once, one sixty one. There is not even 161, uh, 183. There is only one 183. So the answer is 140. <clears throat> okay. The other things that they might ask you on is the way of um, sampling the data. How do we sample the data? So there are four different ways you can sample the data. We use 
what we call a simple random sampling, which means every individual in that population had equal opportunity of being included in the sample. So <clears throat> that is simple random sampling. So it's the same way as if I have names of people and I put them in the head, every name that goes into that head has an equal chance of being picked from that head because it's a blind thing. You just put your hand, you shuffle, shuffle, and then you pick one. It could have, if you pick Lazy, you could have put, uh, picked Adam or Steve or Mary or John. Anyone who was in that group had an equal chance of being selected. So that is what we call a simple random sampling. Then we have also. <coughs> Then you have a systematic random sampling. With systematic random sampling, <coughs> it means you need to select the KM um, uh, a number that you want to start selecting from, and thereafter you need to start selecting uh, that KM place number. Um, so normally this systematic uh, random sampling is done when you do surveys with the houses. So you can say, uh, I'm going to select the fifth house on the street. The, every fifth house on that street will be included in my survey. And then you first choose your, the house and then you count, you start counting. So you, you first choose a house and then you start counting one, two, three, four, five, that house is included. Then you start again, one, two, three, four, five, that house is included like that. And that is what we call systematic random sampling. Then we also have what we call a <coughs> stratified random sampling. <coughs> so a stratified random sampling is when you put things into subgroups, into groups that are similar to one another. And from those groups, then you select your sample your you do your simple random sampling from those subgroups which we call stratas or yeah we can call them subgroups or we call them stratas and that is the other way of doing a random sampling the other way of doing the random sampling is proportionality random sampling where you select the sample based on the proportion of those people belonging to that sample. And the other one, which is the last one, it is what we call a cluster sampling. With clusters, you put them into different clusters. It's like the um, uh, stratified random sampling, but yeah, you create groups with, do not even have to have the same commonality or same population groups or, or so. It's just you select, you create ten, uh, groups of people, and then from those groups of people, you then go and do a random sample. And those are the types of random sampling or the types of sampling that you can get. So let's see which one of this statement refers to any of the types of random sampling. So the staff of a college consists of a professor, senior lecturer, lecturer, junior, and administrative staff. A statistician wishes to determine the opinion of staff in the college on their salaries. He has a list of all staff members arranged alphabetically according to their names or their surnames. <clears throat> he randomly selects a professor at the starting point of the list and then subsequently selects every fifth member of the staff on the list. The type of sampling will be, if you were listening to me, you should know the answer to that. <clears throat> Is it number one, number two, number three, number four, number five? Number three. It will be a systematic because of the KMs number that they would have selected. Anyway, it cannot be a quantitative sampling. I've never mentioned anything to that effect. And 
uh, the statement doesn't even count because there is an answer to the question, right? <clears throat> okay. Let's then move to question 25. The owner of a small company has 15 employees. Three employees and 15,000 per month, seven employees and 10,000 per month, and five employees and 7,000 per month. The owner's monthly salary is 25,000. The mean monthly salary of all people in the company is to two decimals. <clears throat> that is your exercise, not mine. You I'm can sorry, use your... um, may I please ask you if when you're done um, at the end, will you please show me how to work um, work out with the uh, sharp calculator because I, I didn't quite catch all of it uh, when you were teaching us. So I apologize. Okay. We, will, we will do it now when we do this exercise because okay. it also touches on that. Thank you. Okay, so. Uh, because you asked, let's do this together as well. But before we answer this question, we need to make sure that we have all the values, right? So we know that there are three 15,000. So you should have 15, 15, 15. There are seven, 10,000. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, and there are five, seven thousand. One, two, three, four, five. And the owner ends twenty five thousand. I'm just going to put twenty five here at the end. <laughs> so they should be 15 employees plus the owner. They should be 16 because they say all people in the company. So it also includes the owner, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, including the owner. Because they didn't say only the employees, they said all people in the company. So you also need to take that into consideration. So, so those who want to calculate manually, you can use X bar is equals to the mean, the sum of your observation, meaning adding all of them, dividing by how many they are. <clears throat> those who are using calculators, then we can use the calculator. Um, I will need the values because of this ones, there are so many of them. So let me just take it up a little bit and put the calculator right here. I'll have to move the calculator around, but there are 315. Um, seven tenths and five sevenths. So let's capture the data. First, you need to put your calculator to mode, state mode. <clears throat> So you go mode. So I hope you are following, right? Mode. Let's do this. Just going to move this to the side and move my calculator to the side. Doesn't matter whether you see the values on the calculator on my side, they will always appear on the calculator itself. <clears throat> Okay, so we know that <laughs> we have, I shouldn't put it too big. Okay, so state mode, mode one and zero for SD. I hope you are following. <clears throat> so we need to capture the, the data. When I start clicking on the calculator, it then changes. There's nothing I can do. I'll start with the values at the site, which are seven. Seven, there are five sevens. So you say, uh, because it's 7,000. So you also remember it's 
thousands. So seven thousand. And you need to press the ENT or the M plus. And seven thousand. M plus seven thousand. I've got more values. I can use the delete. Seven thousand and plus. <clears throat> Four, need one more, 7,000. Now, when it comes to the 10,000, it's going to be a little bit difficult because there are so many of them. I'll capture the 15,000 first. There are three of them, which makes it easy for me to count. 15,000 and plus 15,000. M plus and 15,000 M plus. And I can also capture the last one, which is 25,000. 25,000 M plus. Now, because I know that there are, how many are they? So that I know how many to keep in this. 15. So when I get to uh, um, 14, I will know that I need to just capture one last 10,000. So now <clears throat> I must just capture all the 10,000. So 10,000 and plus 10,000 and plus 10,000 and plus 10,000 and plus 10,000. Plus and they said fifteen, so I must go to sixteen, ten thousand and plus, and the last one ten thousand and plus, because now there will be sixteen people in the company because there are fifteen employees plus the owner, which makes it sixteen. So I've got all the values captured. All I just need to do is calculate the mean. So let's let's calculate the mean. So the mean should be any of these values that we see here. So you can press the on and off button and go alpha and button number four and equal. And the mean is option number four, 10,937.5, which is option number four. And you can do the same with your sharp calculator. Let's see in the sharp. I'm just gonna put it on the side. And on sharp, 25,000 and equal 15,000, not 150,000, equal 15,000 equals 15,000 equals and then 10,000. So with the K show, it's easy to see how many I have captured because in this one, I can always go and count how many they are. And if I captured more than I'm supposed to, it should tell me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to have seven of them. So 15. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need one more. Seven. And then <clears throat> five, seven thousand, seven thousand, seven thousand, seventy, seven thousand, seven thousand, and seven thousand, and the last seven thousand. And I can double check because one, two, three, four, five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
15, and 25. So I've captured all of them and then I go to AC and then we go shift one and four and two and equal. And the answer is the same. Okay, so those are the questions relating to data. I think there are no more other questions. Okay. Let's go to the next paper and see if we can find more questions. <laughs> the other things that relate to uh, data handling um, um, are what we call them the counting rules. Because also with counting rules, you find number of ways you do certain things. And this in terms of data um, counting, uh, data handling, these are part of what we call probabilities. But because you guys don't deal with probabilities, but there are uh, counting rules that you also need to be aware of in your module. Counting rules are a way of telling us how many ways we can do certain things. So there is <coughs> there um, is multiplication way, which is your n uh, your n times m way, which we call it multiplication way, where you have two restaurants and three parks, and you want to go and visit any of them. Uh, but you don't know how many different ways you can go and visit those. So you have two options here. That in your area, there are three restaurants and two parks, and you want to go and enjoy any of those. So in order to, for you to know how many number of ways you can go to those two parks and those three restaurants, then we apply what we call the multiplication, which tells you, the n times m ways. So if I have two packs multiplied by three restaurants, so therefore there are six ways that I can go and visit any of them. <coughs> right? That is the multiplication. Then we have a factorial way, which tells me if I have a race and there are seven positions, uh, in which you can come into this race and win a prize, then I can use the factorial way of getting to any of those positions. Because if I have seven positions, then I can either be in seventh position or sixth position or fifth position. Ah, did I forget to put the seven factorial or six position or fifth position or fourth position or three position or second position or position number one? That is the n factorial. On your calculators, you do have that. So let's, if when we continue with this, I can also show you where to find all this information. <coughs> so on the case your calculator, the factorial is in orange. So you're going to press the shift and then press the button that corresponds to that. So here we have seven factorial, which is seven, shift, and that will give you your seventh factorial and then press the equal sign. It's 5,040, right? Those are the number of ways, 5,040. 
or if you don't want to use your calculator in this manner, you can just go and say seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, even though it's one, it's the same. It will also give you the same answer. Those who are using the sharp calculator, <clears throat> you also have the same. So we need to go back to normal calculator on this one as well. So you press uh, mode and then you press zero, it takes your calculator back to the normal calculator. The same <coughs> on the case show, if you want to take your calculator back to normal, you just say mode and then you press one for comp and it will take you back to math <coughs> normal calculator. So in order for us to calculate the factorial on this one, so you say seven and your n factorial is also written in orange is on button number four. So you're going to press this second function and press the button number four for n factorial and you can see there and press equal and that will give you your factorial. And that is factorial. <clears throat> the next one, it is what we call permutation and combination. <laughs> so permutation and combination, before I explain what those two are, uh, on your calculators, they on the case show, these are permutation NPR, and this is combination uh, where it says uh, NCR. So permutation, combination, there is a slight <coughs> difference between the two. In permutation, order matters the most. So how things are done matters the order in which things are done matters in permutation in combination order is no matter preference has no matter so <clears throat> uh, where is my pen just give me a second oh yeah found it so n p r is your permutation n c r is your combination here order or rank of how things are done very important if they specify if you need to select a three committee member they tell you that you need to select the chairperson a president a, a chairperson a secretary and a treasurer they told you the order in which you need to do the election combination order no <clears throat> issues if they tell you you need to select a three member committee, regardless of who sits in that committee, three member committee. You can see that this is the same question. The other one, they gave you the preference in terms of who you need to select. The other one, no preference in terms of who needs to be selected. So you need to be able to define or clearly read the question and identify which one is permutation, talks to permutation and which one talks to combination. So those are the two. <coughs> so three ways. So if if I have a 10 committee member, so my N is 10 and I need to select three positions. So I'm going to call this X is equals to three. The same way on this side, N is 10, X is, X is three. So X is the same as R. R and X are the same thing. So how do we get that? So on your calculators, so we can start with the case show one. Let's calculate permutation. So you first need to put in the 10, the bigger number first. Anyway, the bigger number first. And because it's written in orange, we press second function and then we press the multiplication. Then it gives us the P and then we put the smaller value, which is 10 P and you press equal and the answer here you will get 
10 P3 gives you, uh, what did it give us? 720. Now, let's do the combination. <clears throat> combination is the same. Bigger number first, second function, division, and three and equal, and that is 120. Which is 10, three gives 120. As you can see, they both asking you the same thing of how many number of ways you can do this. And you will get the same different, or you will get the different ways that you can do. If order was given, then you it will give you 720 ways. And if no order was given, it gives you 120 ways. So those who are using the Casio, also the same on Casio, um, on the sharp, sorry, those who are using a sharp, uh, is written in orange. So the NCR is on button number five, NPR is on button number six. So let's do the NPR first. 10, second function, six, three, equal. You can see that it's 720 and NCR, it will also give us the same 10, second function, five, three, equal, and it's 120. So. Okay, now let's answer this question of ours. So <clears throat> on this one, it might be a little bit trickier than <clears throat> the things I just explained. An investor has decided to purchase the shares in the stock market of three companies. One engaged in aerospace activities, one involved in energy development, and one involved in electronics. After some research, the account executive of the brokerage firm recommends that the investor consider stock from five aerospace companies, three energy companies, and four electronic companies. In how many number of ways can the investor select the group of three companies from their account executive. <clears throat> How many number of ways can they select? Because here yeah, we're talking about from the uh, account manager, five, three, and four. So the number of ways can only be five times three times four, because there are four ways. How many ways can he select? He can select five times three times four times three. <clears throat> what is the answer? Five times three times four oh, equals 60 ways. <laughs> Those are the number of ways that you can select three companies. That is what we call the multiplication rule. Suppose the investor decides to purchase stocks in two aero companies and two energy development companies and two electronics companies. In how many number of ways can the investor select the group of six companies? Now, remember, there is a difference between the first statement where they wanted to know how many groups of three companies because that was a general statement because there are five three and four companies to select from right now <clears throat> now he wants to select five uh, from this group of six companies there are two 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 six but he needs how many number of ways can the investor select 
the two groups of six companies from the investment from the recommended list of five, three, and four. Now, you need to take into consideration the following. <clears throat> How many number of ways can they select two companies from those five aerospace, two companies from the energy, two companies from the aerospace? And that is, <coughs> Is that a combination or is that a permutation? Because they're telling you how, how they want the selections to be done, two companies from this, two companies from that, two companies from that. If they didn't mention that, two energy companies from development, two energy, they could have said two companies from any of the, two companies from each of this and not tell you how many from each of these companies, then you will use what we call a combination because they are specific in terms of two companies from, they're telling you the order in which they want those companies to be or the preference or the rank in terms of those. So we're going to use what we call a combination or permutation, sorry, permutation. So we need to calculate, hmm, Five uh, permutation is P five P two plus uh, there are three. And there are four. Oh, let's see how many ways we can so you say five shift times two equals 20. Probably even you don't need the plus, it's a multiplication because it might be a multiplication. Let me first double check. Three shift. Two, six, and <clears throat> the last one is four. Hmm? It's twelve, and Or is it combination? But they told they told us how many they are because they need. Let's double check if it's combination. It will be five. Five. Combination two. That is ten. And three combination. Two, three and four combination. Two, six, six times two. It's a combination. Okay. <clears throat> it's going to be combination, not, uh, not permutation. And we're going to multiply. So it is combination. Then we can assume that because in the question, in here, they didn't specify doesn't matter right now. 
uh, in the question it says how many number of ways can this investor select the group of six companies because they didn't say select uh, energy companies so they didn't give so we should have read the statement in that way not the other two parts of the question so the important starts from there because they just say six companies so we need to say it is five combination two times three combination uh, two times four combination two and then we can then calculate the values <clears throat> five combination two equals ten multiply by three combination two equals three and four combination two equals six. And when you multiply that, ten times three times six equals hundred and eighty ways, which is option two. Because if it was permutation, it would have given us 1,140. <clears throat> so that's how you will answer some of the questions. So that is in terms of counting rules. Okay. So let's go and find the data handling questions. I don't think in your module this time you are doing the LAPAES. Um, okay. And there is your question. But that is so huge. But they only want you to calculate the loaf of bread for Thursday, the mean of the loaf of bread for Thursday. That is your exercise. Um, I'm going to give you five minutes to do that. So you only use the Thursday. Where there's space, it's a decimal. Are you winning?
Are we winning? <clears throat> Remember, you don't have to wait for me to give you the answers. You need to do the exercise yes. yourself so that you can see where you're going wrong. Right? So, please. I got eight of three comma four four. I can go to the options to see if it's the one that you have. Yeah, okay. Number two. Eight three comma four four. Okay. <clears throat> Just give me a second to complete my list. Eight two six and zero. Okay. So let's see if you got the right. Values, so we've got the same values. So the mean, I've captured the data, so already can just go and find the mean, which it's quick, right? <clears throat> Instead of calculating things manually. 803.44, which is option two, also on the Sharp calculator, I also did enter the data, so it's just going to check 803.44. So both. All right, so the next question is find the mean for Tuesday, the median. So that is the median. Median for Tuesday. So, oops, sorry. So we need to go to Tuesday now. Remember, you need to order your data from lowest to highest. <coughs> I'm going to save you time as well. I'm going to calculate for you the position. So the position, while you are sorting your data, it's n plus 1 divided by 2. There are 10 of them, so it's 10 plus 1 divided by 2, which then gives us 11 divided by 2, which is 50 or oh, 5.5. We did do so, something similar to that. So it. So you just need to order the data. From lowest to highest. Let's see again. Very difficult to do that with all this. So 784 is the lowest, followed by no, is not. That is the lowest. That's number one. That's number two. That's three, three, nine, three. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. <clears throat> So we just need 5.5. It will be between 5 and 6. So 5 and 6 are those two numbers. So you can just add both of them and divide by how many they are. By 2. <laughs> Not how many they are. Just divide them by 2. So it will be 7, 9, 5.9 plus 7, 9, 6. And three equals divide by two. Do you get the same answer? So let's see. Oh, maybe you are still busy writing the numbers down. Let me give you time. Mm. 
maybe I also didn't uh, look at the values correctly. My numbering might be wrong. So double check that as well. I'll just those who. It should be option number. Number four in that instance. <clears throat> Are we good? Yes. Okay. So the answer would be option number four, which is seven hundred and ninety six point one zero, which is point ten. <laughs> OK, so the next one is calculate the standard deviation for the masses of low for Sunday. Um, because you are using your calculator, they give you the mean of Sunday to be 7, 9, because they assume that they, you need to go and calculate this manually. In the exam, you can use your calculators, guys. You, you can use shortcuts in your calculator. You're writing a multiple choice question. So save as much time as possible by relying and using your calculator. So it means you need to practice and practice and practice on how to do these things on your calculator. So <clears throat> if we go to standard deviation for uh, standard deviation for Sunday, so we need to go there. Sunday is this column. You need to go and capture the data. So I'm going to also carry on and capture the data. So I need to clear the calculator from any stored values. <laughs> and then start capturing again. 799 because it should give me data set one if I do this. See, so I'm capturing my data again. I don't have to put 0, 0.0 because it's not going to even capture it on the calculator. It doesn't make any difference. Data okay, over. Okay. Eight of seven. Eight of nine. Huh. It's eight oh nine point. Seven nine one. Eight two. Seven, eight, two. Okay. I have all the data captured. I'll wait for you. I'll also go ahead and capture on the case you calculate. So because on the case you, it's very difficult. I'm just going to go back to the original. Okay. 
Okay, I'll wait for you. I can also go show those who don't know the answers. Let me go peep on the answers. They are the answers 10.97, 8.61, 12.48. Those who want to calculate this manually, remember the formula is S is equals to the square root of the sum of your X minus the mean. So they gave you the mean. Divide by N minus one. I that got 8.61. 8.61. So let's see if we also get 8.61. <clears throat> Shift, step one, four, four, and equal 8.61. If I get 8.61 on the other one as well. And go on and off. Uh, it's already in green, alpha, five, 8.61. Okay. No more. The last question paper that we have <clears throat> probably will take us to the end of of the session as well. Um, I just want to go back to this paper just to double check if we didn't miss any including also the counting rules, because I don't think we also concentrated on that. So let's look at this one <clears throat> in terms of the counting rules. Six men, eight women have volunteered to serve on a committee. How many different committees can be formed? With three men and three women. Is that a combination or a permutation? So we just need to read the question. Different committees can be formed with three men, six women, uh, three men, three women. So, <coughs> no preference, right? Same as what we did previously. So you, you will, because there is no preference here, no, they're not saying whether they want a secretary, a treasury, or what not, or how the committee should be formed. They just need to know how many different committees can be formed. So it means we need to use combination and multiplication rule because there are two categories here. So we're going to do combination of NCR times NCR for main. There are six of them. 
and they only need three men in the committee. For women, there are eight of them, and they only need three women in the committee. <laughs> so what is six combination three? It's 20. That will be 20 and 8 combination 3. Fifty-six. 20 times 56. 1,120. 1, and that's how you will answer the questions. <clears throat> Question four, a dealer is offering any four of six special options at the same price. On specially equipped car, how many different options of specially equipped cars do you have? Or will you have? <clears throat> Is this a combination or a permutation? Because they are not telling you <clears throat> what, uh, they're not giving you an order. So also this will be a combi, a combination question. So you can just use N and CR. What is the answer? If you use NCR, N is six. And R will be four. And the answer is 15. 15. Let's see if they don't have any sampling questions on this one. The other questions we can deal with them. Um, at the later stage when we have enough time. Um, or you, yeah, we'll see how it goes because our session ends at two o'clock. Our session ends what time? At two. So we almost, we, and they didn't even check the time. We have eight minutes. Okay. Let's look at this other one. Uh, exam paper and see if there are any questions that we left out that deals with the topic of today. Nothing, nada. Yeah. So the only question paper we didn't go through, it's 2016. So you, you are more than welcome to go through it and ask any question if you need to uh, be. Um, because we only have eight minutes. Oh, I didn't even pay attention to that. Let's see, do we have any other question? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Financial maths, financial maths. Oh, they, so on question, on May, June, the questions are right at the bottom. <clears throat> so when they ask you a question like the average, you must know that that is the mean. So they're asking you to find the mean of this question by adding all of them and dividing by how many there are, or you can use your calculator, just capture all the values <clears throat> and then calculate the mean. And also they're asking you to find the mode uh, within this um, 
six minutes, you should be able to answer all those two questions. If I can answer them, you can answer them. So let's go and answer the two questions. Eleven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are eleven. Capture mm -hmm. also. Are you winning? Yes. The other thing is when you capture the data, you need to pay attention to the detail, <laughs> to the numbers that you are capturing as well, because a one slight mistake might give you the wrong answer, and you might find that that wrong answer is one of the options, and you might get too excited that you have the answer and, uh -uh, you don't have. So what is the mean of the data set? The mean is alpha mean, which is x bar equals. The mean is option number one. And that is the mean. Let's see with the casio calculator, what is the mean? The mean is shift, step one, four, and two, and equal. And the mean is option one. Hmm. That is the mean. The next thing is, <clears throat> what is the mode of this question? Which number appears more than the other numbers? So if we would have ordered this data, it would have been easier to see which one is appearing more than the others. But in this instance, I can see 1,508, uh, What other number? It's only that number, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a one, 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 one. So the answer would be option four. Okay, so, but you remember it's 29 and 30 also. <clears throat> so with 29, easy, once you have captured your data, it makes it easy to find the rest for, and our standard deviation is four equals, and our answer is option number two, 770.096, and 96 is the same as one zero, so it's option number two. Let's see on this one, alpha five equals, and that should be the same. Option number two. Okay. Then the 
last one, which we didn't cover. Guys, we haven't covered something like quartiles. <clears throat> and we left with one minute. I will show, ask you to just give me five minutes of your time so that you, we have covered almost everything because I don't know whether in the exam you will find questions like this or not since I'm not the lecturer and I don't set your exam paper. So I just want to make sure that you have all the information and you know how to answer them. So quartiles. So quartiles are a way of dividing your data into four parts of 25% each. So it means when you are at here, you say you are 25% below, which is quartile one. When you are at this point, we say you are at quartile two, you are 50% uh, below or above. And when you are at this point, we say you are 75% up, so you are quartile three. And at the end, all these values at the end, we call them the maximum and the minimum. And all these numbers, they make up a five number summary. In a way, what I've just done for you there is to tell you that in terms of a quarter, <clears throat> you will have a box whisker plot, which has your maximum, your minimum values within the middle there is quartile two and quartile three uh, sorry this one is quartile one and quartile three which is the, almost everything that i just explained there right so that creates what we call a <clears throat> five number summary if i take the difference between quartile one value and quartile three value there I create what we call a interquartal range, which gives me Q3 value minus Q1 value. The minute I take my interquartal range and I divide that, and we get quartal deviation. <coughs> when I take my interquartal range and I divide that by two, then I get the quartal deviation, which then gives me my QD, which is the value that we want to calculate today. So then how do we then find quartal one and quartal two based on the data that we have? Let's go back to our data, which is this data here. We need to order this data from lowest to highest in order for us to be able to identify those values. So for the quartals, oh, sorry, that's the other thing. The data needs to be sorted. Like the same way as we deal with the median, the data needs to be sorted. So in order for us to calculate quartile three, we use three times N plus one, divide by four to calculate quartile one. We use N plus one, divide by four, or you can use the percentile, but I prefer to use this uh, position values. So let's order the data. Um, it's 1080 followed by 15, 1584, 1, 1580, 1, 1580. 1, 1580. So I can just cancel out the values that I've gone through so that then I don't get confused. And we have 1008, 1800. Then the next one is <clears throat> 2000, 2000, and 2500, and then 2900, 30, 3000, 3121, and 20, sorry, and 3,280. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have all of them. So we know that there are 11. So it will be. Three times eleven plus one divided by four, which is I'm gonna use the fraction. Or oh, I need to go back to my maths comp one so I can use the fraction button. Three times eleven plus one close bracket go down divide by four equals nine. That is the ninth position. Don't get it wrong to say this is the quartile value, is the position. We find in the position first. That is located on position number nine. And here we have 11 plus three oh, plus one divided by four, uh, which is 12 divided by four, which is equal to three, right? Yeah. One, two, three. That is our QD will be one, one, two, three. Uh, sorry, I need to get first the position nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's three thousand. Three thousand minus uh, position three. Well, that is the third position, all right? One, two, three, it's one thousand five. One thousand five hundred and eighty. Um, we need to divide this by two initially. I'm I'm gonna explain why. In the previous days, um, your lecturers didn't divide the quartile deviation by two in the options. They just give it as the equal quartile range value, not the deviation. Uh, so it's 3,000 minus 1,580, which is 1,420. 1, I just want to double check because sometimes they just use that value as they see it there. But you need to divide that value by 2, and the answer is 710. So always remember to do that. Divide this value by 2 and that will give you 710. If you don't divide it by two, you will still find the answer on there, but it will not be the correct answer, right? I think it moved. Hmm. So it will not be the correct answer, but <clears throat> the answer is option three, and that is interquartile range. I hope you understand that um, in that five minutes that I forced in on to you guys, but yeah, if you find more exercises, especially the recent question papers, because I don't have like 2018, 19, 20, 21, those four years, if you have them and you want to share us, share them with us so that we can use them, share them with us uh, so that then we can use them in the activities. But those are the four past exam papers that I have. And I hope they give you all the information you require in order for you to sit and write your exam on the 31st. So I just want to also share our next topic will be differentiation, which will be next week, Saturday. See you same time, same place. If there are any questions or comments, speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, the questions, comments. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, nothing from our side. Good. Remember, always practice, practice, practice. Play with your calculator in order for you to know what is happening and how to use your calculator effectively when you're writing your exams. L like I said, it will save you a whole lot of time if you use your calculator to answer any of the data handling questions, especially the mean, the standard deviation. As you can see that the calculations are very long if you're doing it manually, but when you have a scientific calculator, 
it becomes a two minutes job. <coughs> if there are no questions, comments, uh, then thank you for coming. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and the weekend. I will see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.